about a year ago now was the first time I got my grow light, which isn't actually a grow light, it's a desk lamp from Ikea, 7 watts, and if you know anything about grow lights, you know that this is nothing. And I can't even begin to explain how serendipitous this whole experience has been. At the time of this footage, I was in the process of hitting 500 subs. I had just gotten back from a wonderful vacation. It's been almost a month since I received my grow lights and I just want to give Sansi a big giant hug for sending me these. And of course you all as well for allowing me this opportunity. Throughout this month, I've really tried my best to keep these plants in their places to really put these lights to the test. I managed to keep most of the plants on the bottom shelf the same, but the top shelf definitely has changed a lot. The plants on the top shelf have only been there for like about a week, so I still want to touch on the plants that were there before. Alright, so this is what these shelves are looking like now. As you guys can see, the top shelf is a work in progress. I still think I'm going to switch these around because now that we're sort of coming to this closing point, of the season I'm really starting to like think ahead about like what plants I want to sort of get light throughout the winter yeah this shelf is mostly the same besides like this plant wasn't here before and that plant wasn't there before I used to have my white wizard here where my plotiform is now um, again just preparing for winter you guys this tritoscantia has been loving it like the reason why I put this Tritoscantia here in the first place is because a lot of these green vines you guys can see are growing crazy, like they're so long I actually had to chop this back so there was a lot more green vines going crazy and I want more of these like variegated vines to sort of grow longer and I feel like this could really benefit from all of this light. Before putting it under this light, I kept getting like these really small dingy leaves that just weren't really like big or you know nothing compared to these at least and look at the size of the leaves this is one of the more recent leaves and then also on this vine as well like you guys can see it's just growing like crazy now yeah so as you guys can see a lot of those variegated vines are starting to sort of peek out a little bit and i have experienced some bleaching on this which the light isn't like too close like this is my hand you know it's not too close i feel like this is something that i need to work on on both of the shelves not just this lower one sort of figuring out the length with this being 10 watts i was like okay maybe i can you know get away with keeping it just a little bit closer but i guess not um again still figuring out that like length yeah the tritoscantia has been loving it um while i have those plants out i also want to talk about this plant my variegated heteraceum has also been appreciating this light you guys can see look at that oh my god oh my god yeah the size of these leaves is just like insane this thing has been growing like crazy i'm actually thinking of chopping it but recently i've realized that i kind of stop a lot of my plants from getting big because i constantly chop them so i kind of just want to refrain from you know chopping them now yeah this epipremnum also did get a little bit of light bleach um this was this used to be kind of far away from my brina so i can kind of see why this is happening it's not used to you know this bright of light but it is giving me a new leaf which hopefully will be adjusted to this light and i also noticed that the marble the epipremnum marble down here isn't really growing as much and i think it's just because this epipremnum is sort of blocking its view of the light so i don't know i don't i don't really know how to go about that because if i move the light closer then this is going to get burned or uh bleached so i might just have to move the epipremnum marble out of this whole setup which is gonna make me so sad but still just sort of letting it do its thing this thing has never been a like fast grower if i'm being honest it's always you know had its little moments of taking its time another one that has been enjoying it you guys can see all of this rootage oh my goodness it's also been throwing out like pups left and right you guys can see that little white stuff in between the lucca that is a new like vine trying to come from the it's trying to come from the vines up here um, and there's another one over here. So I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to repot this to sort of readjust it. If not, these vines are just going to be growing against the glass. And the leaf size up on this too, you guys. Like I was getting like tiny, tiny leaves and now I'm finally starting to get 
some sort of size up. This one is also a little bit light bleached. I don't know. This is definitely a user error just because I don't know how close to keep these. And I'm sure they have like a guide online, but me being stubborn, I'm just kind of like, I'll figure it out, you know? But yeah, this Marianta has definitely filled in so, so well underneath this light. Another plant that has been absolutely enjoying this light like to the fullest extent is this ripsalis it is in propagation i think that i might keep this in propagation throughout the winter as well because i feel like every time i move this into soil it just does not do well but also with that i have struggled with rotting while i'm trying to like root it up and i think that some of you have actually said that as well and you guys underneath this light look at that Oh my god, like it makes me so freaking happy because this plant before I got it to root once underneath my IKEA like dust lamp, but after that I couldn't get any more roots out of it and it would just consistently rot and you know continuously rot back and rot back. And now like just look at all of this new growth as well. Like you guys can see it is just like growing like crazy. It truly, truly loves it. I think more recently I've realized that the key to success with this in soil might be a lot of pumice and a lot of sand because these in nature grow in between rocks and stuff like that so it's it's it wants a little bit more of that like grittiness so i think that the next time that i try and move it into soil i'm gonna try and incorporate a lot more of those ingredients in there but yeah back to this this is just freaking loving this light and honestly it makes me so happy because this plant ripsalis in general as a genus i want in my collection but if i cannot figure out this one I don't know how I'm gonna do with the other ones. This has been over here for like less than a week. Same with this um, Politiflorum. So I'm not even gonna touch on those. Moving on to these plants up here. They haven't been up here for long, so I don't really wanna touch on like their growth. I don't think either of these have popped out a new leaf from this light, if that makes sense. But the one thing that I did wanna touch on is some bleaching on my Anthurium here, which, you guys can see like it's it's pretty like here's my hand for reference it's pretty far from the light so i'm kind of like lost on how the heck this thing is getting light bleached again it could just be that it's not used to this light because before it was on this shelf it was down here which down here i only have one barina it's not a two highlight situation so it could just be that um this florida beauty you guys can see it's like right next to the light and it hasn't been minding it which is kind of crazy i was kind of expecting to see like some sort of like issue going on and the reason that i have it so close is because i want this plant to sort of face its leaves down but it's it's just doing whatever it wants you guys i don't know what to do with this i'm thinking that i might like twist it down here maybe but yeah i don't know i've just been like kind of like trying to figure out how to get this plant to move its leaves down and i'm honestly i'm not gonna lie i'm honestly thinking about like taping the, <laughs> the leaves down so that they face the light um yeah anyways to touch on the plants that were here before the first one that i want to touch on is my el choco i did move it to soil and it was not happy um it, I don't think it had anything to do with the lighting. I think it was just general um, not enough aeration, which I've realized now that when I got this plant from PLHC, it was in a really, really chunky, airy mix. And so I think it just needs a lot more of those, you know, air pockets and things like that. So I think I'm going to put this plant in drainage because of that. Now this plant, which freaking loved it underneath that light, you guys. This plant before uh, being underneath that light was such a slow grower. It also has to do with watering. Like you guys, I just watered this the other day and it's already sort of drying out. This plant is so thirsty and I don't even know why if it's such a slow grower, but it popped out this leaf while underneath that light and it is just, oh. I know it's not anything big, but it's just like, I also chopped it underneath the sansy bulb. It actually started already popping out um, some growth points and it already has like a new leaf in there. Uh, this plant just loved it so, so much, but um, this plant I'm actually thinking about getting rid of. And so I wasn't, you know, prepared to give it that prime real estate. So I did move it back in front of my window. 
that's that's a whole other conversation for another video. Another thing that I feel like I should have mentioned is Sansi is not paying me to say any of this. They simply just sent me the light and asked me to give my real honest thoughts, which I appreciate from any, you know, company that I get to work with as long as I am able to be completely honest and give, you know, all of the negatives and the downsides. I appreciate that. So some negatives that I have noticed with this light, the first thing that I will say is they do get really, really hot, like the bulbs themselves, but these lights are designed to sort of dissipate some of that heat. The main area that you want to stay away from is right where the LEDs are. There's like a panel that's that sort of clips on to the design of the light, if that makes sense. And so... There's been like multiple times where I'll accidentally touch it. Like if I'm like reorganizing my plants there or something, I've like accidentally brushed up on it and it's like really, really hot. Um, but again, that's just by accident and um, I just try and be more careful than me. Like, you know, looking back, I definitely could have just moved the light out of the way, but it's just something that has happened. And I don't feel like this is a true negative because they themselves have already, you know, realized this and have sort of done what they can to to sort of solve the problem because literally the only piece that gets truly, truly hot is right where the LEDs are. So I, again, just stay away from that portion of the light and you'll be fine. Another thing that is just sort of from my experience, I personally wish they were longer, um, but it being a clamp, I can definitely move it and I've definitely figured out a way to sort of help with that because before when I first set these up I clipped them straight onto the shelves on this wall and now I have clipped it onto this brown shelf right here so that I can sort of maneuver them however I want and so that they aren't too too close to those plants um so I think it being a clip-on is definitely a gird gird <laughs> It adds good versatility for ways that you can use it, which I definitely have learned to appreciate. Ooh, this, I feel like this is something that I was hoping wouldn't happen from the beginning. From the beginning, I noticed right away that the sort of like the rods where you were able to like bend these, I noticed how stiff they were and how like, I was honestly like so impressed by how like stiff it was. Like I would just move it somewhere and it would stay exactly where it is but I have noticed that over time it has sort of lost that stiffness. I will say right now that it only loses it towards the base of the rod and not like towards the end of where the light is. Um, and that's just for me personally like using it and maneuvering it over these past couple weeks. I, I just hope that it doesn't get to the point where it isn't able to hold up those lights as well because then it, I feel like it would just sort of lose the whole purpose of it being a clamp on, a clip on light. I don't know why it keeps saying clamp. Another thing that I would like to add on to this is that their website is very, very, very confusing. As of recently, I started looking at their actual website, like if I were to actually shop for these lights and there is multiple listings of the same thing with completely different pricing there's some that say us only and there's like two that say us only that have two completely different prices it, it's just a big giant confusion when actually shopping for these and from a consumer standpoint where you're actually going on their website to shop it kind of like makes me turn away from actually shopping on their website because there's literally just so many different listings of the same product with different pricings. So it just kind of feels a little bit sketchy, I guess. Now to move on to the positives. The first thing I will say is that these are pretty affordable, uh, whether you're looking on Amazon or on their actual website. It's around the same price that I got my Burinas for, which is pretty affordable to me. Another thing is that there are multiple varieties of this. I think it starts at like two and you can go up to four lights on a singular clip-on. And so again, it just adds more versatility for your specific situation. Like if you want two lights to three lights or four lights, you know, you really get to pick and choose what you want. This was also the easiest setup that I have had to like set up for any grow lights. Like with my Barinas, with the Barinas, you have a little bit more customization. So it is, it is a little bit more tailored to you. With these, you literally just screw in the bulbs and plug it in, clip it on somewhere and you're set. Like it's literally the easiest setup that I've ever had to do with a grow light. Another thing, the timer on this light makes such a big difference. And 
I personally don't have timers on my Barinas. Like, I always, like, I wake up, I manually turn those on. So I feel like it could just definitely be from me not having that experience with, like, other timers. The timer on this light makes such a big difference, you guys. Like, I have been having to manually turn on my Barinas for such a long time. So I've just sort of gotten used to that groove of things. But having the Sansi timer on this light literally makes such a big difference because I don't even have to worry about turning it on. It just turns itself on. You can have four hours, eight hours, and 12 hours. I have mine on 12 just because it's what I've found myself most comfortable with. And it's what I sort of tend to keep my Brina's on as well. So it's nice to have that same schedule with, you know, my other lights. Another thing that I noticed almost immediately when I set them up is that they're bright but not blinding. Before I had my Brina light on this bottom shelf and then I had, of course, the Ikea lamp on top. But every time I would sit at my desk, like I'm always at my desk, whether that's like gaming or editing or, you know, whatever I'm doing here. And that Brina light would give me so many eye strains because of how bright bright it was and it was just like obviously I wouldn't just look straight at the Brina light but it was always in my peripheral vision and it would literally just like I can't tell you how many times I had to go lay down and like take a quick nap to like get rid of that eye strain um, but with these they are very like it's very bright and like overall brightness it's really really bright but it's also very like direct and bright if that makes sense because with my ikea light it was like just like very like dissipated light it wasn't like focused or like direct in any way but with these ones they are very like they have like a focal point of where the light hits and then the rest is just sort of dissipated the color of the light as well i want to say it's the light that i have found that's closest to the barinas it's not as yellow as the barinas but it's it's at a good temperature i would say like it's not too cool or too warm it's very very in the middle which i appreciate so so much because my ikea light before it was an led light but it was very like blue and it really didn't blend in well with my brinas so it's nice to have that same temperature throughout the whole room and another thing which I definitely appreciate is they have a lifetime free bulb replacement. So if your bulb ever stops working or, you know, if you're ever having trouble with a bulb, they will send you a new one and you can just like replace it. And yeah, it's something that I definitely appreciate so that you're not, you know, having to buy a completely different light and, you know, just wasting what isn't needed to be wasted i guess overall i really am enjoying these lights and i can't wait to experience more growth with them as well and thank you again to sansi for sending me these lights i truly appreciate it thank you all for supporting me throughout this whole journey and you know continuing to support me as well and yeah thank you for helping me hit 500 subs it was definitely a goal that i had for this year and i'm just so happy that i got to accomplish it the link to this light will also be down below if you guys are interested. It is not an affiliate link. I don't earn any commission off of you guys using that link, so feel free to use it. But yeah, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and I truly, truly hope you enjoyed.